Okay, thank you very much for coming to, gee, are we at lecture four already? Five. Uh, five. It's lecture five already. Okay. Um, next week I should just start off by saying we're going to have an a extra special uh, lecture with Dr. Paul Hornby coming over here. We're going to be starting 15 minutes early and uh, running a 45 minute lecture. So uh, that will be a special class uh, for everyone. Uh, to be sure, we always look forward to Dr. Hornby coming over. And uh, I think with that, I'm just going, oh, I should also mention too, every year it seems we have problems scheduling the uh, lectures around the reading break. We, uh, again, have done it this year. So instead of uh, having uh, uh, one week miss a hempology. We're not even going to uh, miss a, a lecture through this through the reading week, and we'll have two weeks where we discuss cannabis and the media. And one of those two weeks, I think the the one during reading break, will actually show a uh, half an hour, or I think no, it's more like a 20 minute uh, documentary done by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation where half of it is on me and half of it's on kind of Mark Emery and BC Cannabis and US politics and stuff. Again, because it was by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, most people here haven't uh, seen it, and so I thought it would be an uh, appropriate uh, film to show sort of for a reading week, uh, kind of in preparation towards our, our film festival in January. So, aside from those logistics, today's topic is cannabis research. This is the first time I've talked on this subject. Gail and Dr. or sorry, Professor Scott McDonald uh, have done this lecture before, and next year I hope to have a researcher here doing this lecture and watching it again myself. In fact, today's discussion will primarily, I hope, be about the research coordinator. Uh, and uh, project that uh, projects, even I should say, that are, are coming with that individual that we hope to be hiring in, in the next few months, or will be, I should say. But uh, in order to give our work a bit of context, I need to d explain, I think, a little bit about what cannabis research is, what has been done, and kind of why we've been led towards uh, doing the work that, that we plan upon doing. And I, I couldn't help but throw in a cartoon. There's so many uh, good cartoons out there about uh, this subject, but uh, this one in, in particular seemed to me uh, to, to highlight uh, a lot of the issues going on in, in the drug war, really, in, in general, and how science is, is ignored. And uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, the need for, for science is also you know, apparent in these things. And I, I love you using humor myself to, to bring messages uh, across. But you know, this is what we have, is guns against brains. This kind of you know, uh, symbolizes that and makes fun of the fact that smart people you know, are often held to the gun for, for thinking differently. But this is where we're at. So, uh, there's a lot to research with cannabis, and a lot has been done, to be sure. And uh, we won't be repeating uh, that work, or in some ways, much of what is being done in general, uh, I would have to say, if, if people are, are thinking that we're going to be you know, doing stuff that's been done before, quite the opposite. Uh, others have done extensive work uh, discovering, uh, first, the cannabinoid uh, structures. And there's approximately 70 different chemical structures called cannabinoids that can appear in the cannabis plant, separate from the terpenes and the flavonoids that have different effects on the mind and body as well. Certainly, you know, this is much more towards Dr. Hornby's lecture next week. But uh, nevertheless, the, the research that's being done on cannabis that we want to both inform ourselves about and help inform the, the public about, because one of the things we want to help people be able to do is kind of shift through the good research, the bad research, and find out what you know is actually uh, you know the current scientific understanding of, of cannabis is kind of one of our goals, and and part of that will be you know understanding not only the the cannabinoid structures, but in a way more importantly the synthetic cannabinoids that are being made to to mimic these, or other you know sort of extractions that are, are being made. Uh, or to, to mimic endocannabinoids, which I'll get at in just a second here. And so uh, there is a lot of research being done right now 
on these different cannabinoids, and they're, they're taking the plant apart in the laboratory. Uh, hey guys, uh, yeah, the sheets there. There you go. Um, there, there's, you know, uh, this picture here I think is from JW Pharmaceuticals over there in Britain, and uh, there's more and more research being done really around the globe. Here in Canada, research has been basically uh, cut years ago. There's very little being done, so we're working in a vacuum here. But uh, other countries, uh, Switzerland, uh, you know, uh, Holland, uh, uh, many other places around the world are doing more and more research, and companies as well. Um, now here in Canada, uh, the, really the, the leading uh, groups you could say are Prairie Plant Systems. This is a picture of the opening to their mine shop where the, uh, the legal cannabis is being grown for research here in Canada. And so uh, um, it's something that uh, has uh, been very contentious uh, to be sure and their contract is up. And it's my firm belief that uh, Prairie Plant Systems uh, will lose the contract to Canisat who has, uh, you know, under Moses Zander, bought 40% of this company in order to gain access to the standard operating procedures. Basically the patent on growing cannabis is owned by Prairie Plant Systems which is why the government, even when they give people right now licenses to possess or grow their own cannabis, they can't inform them how to grow because the patent on the best practices to grow pot are owned by prairie plant systems. And they won't open those, that, that process up to the public so that you know, we don't know what the best way to cure is or what the best way to fertilize is or what the government says is the best way to do that because all of those practices, all the ways that they grow their cannabis are, are kept hidden and so uh, you know really uh, we want that's a, another thing that uh, our uh, research foundation and, and drug companies certainly uh, hope to hope to change um, uh oh just hold on there we go and to uh, give you an idea gee I didn't bring all my props that I could have but uh, I do have some sativics uh, I think uh, last year I Gave myself a shot of it when I did a class. It's stuff. <laughs> stuff. It's just alcohol based. I don't drink it all, so that, but even then, the taste of it is just not really that pleasant at all. But uh, this year, uh, the shot earlier I showed with the laboratory uh, guy with the pot plant, I believe JW Pharmaceuticals is that picture, and they make this product here. They actually extract THC and CBD, kind of the number one and two, you might say. Uh, uh, most active cannabinoids in the plant, and uh, they, they leave everything else out, all the flavonoids, terpenes, everything else, and put in this alcohol-based spray, um, which is an improvement upon the synthetic uh, cannabinoids that they're making, but nevertheless, we think that there's a lot of room to, to go. Um, and uh, the main reason, and, and we'll be getting into this uh, in, in other lectures, uh, although uh, we, we could almost teach a class on endocannabinoids. Many people don't understand why all of those cannabinoid structures I mentioned earlier are so uh, beneficial for the human body. And uh, this uh, picture doesn't uh, describe it very well. It would actually take me a few minutes to describe the diagram. <laughs> I only can realize or understand so much of it myself. But uh, I mentioned before that we had uh, 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 cannabinoids. Um, now, uh, there's three ways that you can actually come across cannabinoids. There's the natural world, right, plant-based cannabinoids. And I think there's a few cannabinoid structures that do appear in other plants in very small amounts and, 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 and just kind of single cannabinoid structures by themselves, but cannabis has got them all kind of bunched together. Um, the other way that you can uh, create or have a cannabinoid is synthetically, right? You know, create it in a laboratory. But the one that's been most recently discovered and uh, really is, is the most exciting to us uh, in, in the last five, six, maybe seven years the science on this subject has exploded is the endogenous cannabinoids or endocannabinoids as they're often referred to. And that is essentially, we have a whole bunch.